Okay. All right, and welcome back to the balance of Lab 1 in CIS 4710. So tonight we're going to cover um, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, but we need to get caught up to how we got to this point thus far. So uh, when you bring up your target box, you should be fine. And your Cali box, they just have to be on the same network, like I discussed before in the first set. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure we have connectivity to it. I'm going to open up a terminal. There we go. All right, and it should be at dot 139 because we determined that last time. And we can see it. So that's good. Uh, so let's control C out of that. And let's uh, make sure we start our PostgreSQL service. So that's important for the Metasploit framework. Service PostgreSQL start. I'll take a second. All right. And then once that's done, we're going to leave the terminal open for now. We're going to go ahead and start Armitage. And while that's starting, let's go ahead and take a, a real quick look um, at uh, what, what we're going to do tonight. So we're going to break into this server. Uh, via a common vulnerability that you found in your OpenVos scan. All right, the SMB v2 vulnerability, MS09050. We're going to open up a meterpreter session. And one of the reasons I want to emphasize reading through an entire lab at once is because a lot of times when you go and you sit these hands-on labs in industry, you can knock out three or four things at one time using one tool or with one technique uh, that's completely vital, and you save yourself a lot of time. The reason that these organizations like Offensive Security do this in their OSCP, for example, is to see if you are critically thinking through all the parameters of the lab and not just wasting time. So... Looking at this, this is a good example of how to do that. We need to open up a some means of persistence with the device. We need to gain access and create our own account via Armitage. We need to create a service that will provide us remote access. So if we do number eight, we inherently basically do number six. If we create a service that we can log into and we create an, an account uh, that we have access to, we have created a method or a path of persistence. Everybody, make, everybody understand where that's coming from? Excellent. All right. So 6, 7, and 8 are very tightly uh, associated with one another uh, if you do it a certain way. So I'm going to show you my, my thinking and my methodology for that. Uh, number nine is using a brute force tool. I'm going to use X-Hydra as an example. Again, I'm going to create a service that I can use X-Hydra with. Okay, again, completely legit to do that. And finally, number 10, I'm going to leave that to you guys. This is basically your, your report, your write-up of the lab, your, your, your lab write-up. It's pretty self-explanatory as to what I want. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's break into this bad boy first. Oh, connect to the database. And I've already scanned it. It's already in Armitage from the last time we did this. We're just going really slow today. There we go. Okay.
I'm going to give myself some space here. All right, there we go. There's our target. All right, so from here, I'm just going to do a quick search on SMB in the search panel, and I'll find the exploit. Oh, I think I closed it. SMB. There it is. MS09050. Negotiate. Function index. That's right. So I'm going to double click on that. And I'll make sure that all my parameters are correct. The remote address is right. The local address is right. I can change this port if I want to. That's typically where I've ran into problems in the past. I'm going to make sure that I, I, I select Use Reverse Connection, and I'm going to launch that. Hopefully, within about two or three minutes, here goes the exploit, I will get a reverse shell. Because it says it could take it up to three minutes, 180 seconds, for it to trigger. There it goes. So it's always nice when things work. So this is basically where we left off from the previous lab. So in order to do 6, 7, and 8, okay, I've got to get a payload onto the server, execute that, or provide a screenshot that provides, hey, how did you do this? Okay, so I say you can use Netcat, um, or there are several other ways that you can do a backdoor. So here's how I'm going to do it in a kind of a interesting kind of way. I'm going to go into my interpreter session. I'm going to go to interact, and I'm going to bring up a command shell. So when I bring up a command shell, uh, I'm going to create a user. All right. So it's this is always good because when I get asked all the time by three-letter agencies, or excuse me, actually I ask this question of of hiring managers. Hey, what are you looking for people in offensive security? What types of uh, skill sets are you looking for? What do they need to know? And I'm always expecting, oh, they need to know, know the Metasploit framework, or they got to be really good at Cali, or they got to be. Um, you know, have some social engineering. No, none of that. System administration is the number one answer. They have to know system administration. They have to know maybe know a little bit of network engineering. Okay, and here's why. I had one manager at the NSA uh, tell me this, and he said it's the proverbial dog that chases the car analogy. What happens when the dog catches the car? Right? Do they know what to do? Right? Do, 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 they, you know, do they catch the car and bite it? Do they get ran over? Do, does he hike his leg? I don't know. I mean, you have to know what you do need to do when you catch the car. So this is one of those situations. So once I've gotten a reverse shell, I'm going to go ahead and create a user with the um, net account. So I, the command, if I'm not mistaken, is net uh, user... Then the username, we're going to use Bob. All right. Then forwards, oh, then Bob's password. So typically here, we need to ensure that we probably meet the GPO password requirements. So typically, out of the box, Windows 2008 is going to be minimum eight characters, a capital, a lowercase, a number, and a special character. So I'm just going to use password123 exclamation point where my password P is a capital. Space forward slash add. I think that's the command. And it says it completed it successfully. So how do we tell if Bob's on the system? Really simple. We just go to the CIS target. You hit Control Alt Insert. Hey, look, it's Bob. Now let's see if we can log in with Bob. Password one two three exclamation point. Hey, we logged in with Bob. Happy day. 
Okay. But anybody have any idea what the problem is at this point in time? Kyle, what's the problem? Bob is just a user. Very good. Don't answer this next question. You've used your token for the night, Kyle. What do we need to do with Bob? Other than, oh, we had a blue screen of death. Okay. This happens sometimes with Armitage uh, or Metasploit. Whoops. That's okay. We can fix this. Reset it. There we go. This will be fun. So this will be fun because we still have, supposedly, the command shell <laughs> in Armitage. Let me show you how to recover from this, if I can recover from it. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to pause the recording here real quick. All right, we're back with Bob. So how we can tell if there's an issue is if we go to control panel. And let's, let's, let's see if Bob can make a user. So we're going to try to manage another account. And it's going to blue screen on me again. I can tell. Wait for it. Actually, it wouldn't let me click anything. Oh, boy. I have all kinds of problems. I don't have access to this sucker. Nothing. Uh, Bob can't even get out on the internet. That kind of really stinks. So let's uh, log Bob out. Let's go back into Armitage and see if we can reconnect. Different port this time. Okie dokie. Ah, uh, so it is going up and it is going down. It, it's opening up and it's dying at the same time. So if you have that happen, what I would suggest you do is um, reboot Kali. Because Armitage a lot of times gets confused and the packages get kind of hosed. So we'll do that. We'll pause out again. <laughs> 